every year, parents tell me the same thing in clinic. My child's glasses prescription just keeps getting worse. And the truth is, they're right, especially if their child is nearsighted. Traditional glasses do an excellent job of correcting vision. They let your child see clearly at school and at home and playing sports, but they don't do anything to stop the disease from progressing. In fact, in the way they bend light at the edges, traditional glasses can actually send the wrong signal to the eye, encouraging it to grow longer. That extra elongation, that's what makes nearsightedness worse over time. So what if glasses could do more than just correct vision? What if they could actually help slow down that progression? Well, for now, for the First time in the United States, the FDA has authorized a new type of eyeglass lens, the Essilor Stellis lens, and this could be a game changer for families everywhere. In today's video, I'm going to cover why this FDA authorization is such a big deal, where Stellis lenses are already being used worldwide, how these lenses work, and how they're different from traditional glasses, what the clinical trial results show, how Stellis compares to other myopia management treatment options like contact lenses, low-dose atropine drops, or ortho-K, and who might benefit the most. So if you're a parent wondering what this could mean for your child, stay tuned. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Long. I'm a board certified pediatric ophthalmologist. I have been treating children with myopia for almost two decades. And as both a doctor and a mom of three, I know how stressful it is when you see that the glasses prescription is going up every single year. You start worrying about what this means for their future, not just for their eyesight right now, but for their long-term health. That's why this FDA approval is actually really such exciting news, and it's why I wanted to break it down for you in today's video. Let's start why this news is so important. Myopia, or nearsightedness, it's not just about blurry vision. It's a chronic, progressive condition. In the United States, about 40% of the population is already nearsighted, and globally, by the year 2050, more than half the world is projected to be myopic or nearsighted. And the issue isn't just thicker glasses. It's the fact that high myopia dramatically increases the risk of serious eye diseases later in life. We're talking about retinal detachment, glaucoma, cataracts, and a condition called myopic maculopathy that can cause permanent vision loss. So unfortunately, until now in the United States, the only FDA approved device for slowing myopia progression was the MySight contact lenses. It's great, I use them all the time in my eye clinic, but they're only approved for ages eight to 12. And many children are actually developing myopia even earlier at ages six or seven or younger than that. And not every child is ready for contact lenses. Parents might worry about infections or hygiene, or just the responsibility of handling a lens. So that's why this Stellis lens fills such a critical gap. It's FDA authorized for ages six to 12 with or without astigmatism, and it's much lower risk compared to contacts. I think something that's very important to know in terms of the global use of Stellis, it is not brand new everywhere. These lenses have already been around the world for several years. In Canada, eye doctors have been prescribing them regularly. In fact, a lot of people from the US get their Stellis lenses from Canada. Across Europe, and especially in France, where Essilor is headquartered, they've been widely available. And in Asia, places like China, Singapore, and Hong Kong, Stellis has been adopted very quickly, largely because childhood myopia rates there are among the very highest in the world. And even Latin American families have access to the options. So in the US, we're kind of the last. We're not the first to try it for sure. And that's kind of a good thing because it means that thousands of children worldwide have already worn Stellis lenses, and then we can learn from their experience. So this is something that I am pointing out now to parents at clinic, just prepping them for the advent of this new technology. The US is sometimes a little bit slower to approve new medical devices, not because they don't work, but because the FDA process here in this country is extremely thorough. In this case, American families are finally gaining access to a treatment that I'm so glad is getting here and one that's been tested internationally and has been proven effective in the real world. So how do these glasses work? So let's break it down. How do these lenses actually work? Because this is what makes them so different from regular glasses. Traditional single vision glasses, what they do is they correct the center of vision beautifully. That's why when your child puts them on, the board at school suddenly looks crisp and the text in a book sharpens and the world comes into focus. But glasses don't just affect the center of the vision, they also 
change how light is bent out at the edges. That's what we call the peripheral retina, and our retina is curved, like you would expect, because our eyeball is a sphere. And with standard glasses, the light in the periphery tends to fall behind the retina. This is called peripheral hyperopic defocus. You don't need to remember that technical name, but here's the key. When light focuses behind the retina, the eye interprets this as a signal to keep growing, to catch up, to put that light into focus so it keeps stretching. And that physical elongation of the eyeball, that's what makes nearsightedness get worse every year. So now the Stellis lenses are designed to change that signal. So in the very center of the lens, there's a nine millimeter clear zone. So kids are getting very sharp, very crisp vision for reading, writing, and all their everyday activities. But surrounding that clear center are rings of hundreds of tiny lenslets. So if you hold the glasses at just the right angle, you might notice the faint dots on the lens. And I have these lenses here in my clinic from another country. Most kids and parents barely see them after a few days, but they're there for a reason. What those lenslets do is they bend the peripheral light differently. So instead of letting it fall behind the retina, they shift it forward so it focuses in front of the peripheral retina. That's what's called peripheral myopic defocus. And that's it, why it really matters because when the light is focused in front of the retina, then the eye no longer gets the signal to grow longer. So the Stellis lenses are basically telling the eye, you're already long enough, you don't need to elongate. That's important. Do the lenses stop eye growth completely? Of course not, no. Kids are still growing and some elongation is normal. But what the Stellis does is it slows down the excessive proof that drives worsening prescriptions. Think about it like this. It's as if your child's eye is a car speeding down the highway. Traditional glasses fix the windshield so the driver can see clearly, but they don't do anything to the speed of the car. The eye just keeps accelerating. Stellis lenses are like putting speed bumps on that road. They don't slam on the brakes, but they do slow the car down enough to reduce the risk of a car crash later on. So instead of fueling that yearly cycle of stronger prescriptions each and every single year, Stellis helps interrupt it. And so that's what gives kids clear vision now and it helps protect their eyes for the future. So what evidence do we have actually that the Stellis lenses works? Well, the FDA didn't just take the company's word for it. Of course, it's a very long and involved process, different stages to get something FDA approved and to get the go ahead to market it. So they reviewed data from a two year clinical trial where children were randomly assigned to either wear Stellis lenses or regular single vision lenses. And that kind of study design gives us a really strong type of evidence. And the results were really impressive. The kids wearing the Stellis lenses had a 71% reduction in myopia progression compared to those wearing standard glasses. So what that really means is that their prescription was increasing much more slowly over the course of those two years. And when researchers looked at the actual shape of the eye, they found a 53% reduction in, in axial length growth. So how much it was growing, how much it was elongating. Now that axial length is just the measurement of how long the eyeball is from front to back. So the longer the eye is, the higher the nearsightedness. So slowing down the elongation is very critical. It's what protects kids from ending up with very high prescriptions and the long-term complications that come with them. As for safety, there were no serious adverse events. A few children noticed things like mild blur or halos around lights at first, but most adapted pretty quickly. Overall, the lenses were very well tolerated. Unlike contact lenses, Stellis glasses don't carry the risk of infections from handling or overnight wear. So for a lot of parents, that's a big peace of mind. So how does Stellis compare to other myopia treatments? So the MySight contact lenses, they're very effective, but they're only approved for ages eight to 12. And then they do require daily handling and good hygiene. They also can't treat astigmatism. So they're currently testing an astigmatism or toric contact lens version of it. They don't have it yet in the market. So if you're worried about your child being able to handle a contact lens, then the MySight contacts might not be a good option, though I routinely use them in my practice. Low-dose atropine drops are another form of myopia management. They can slow myopia progression, but in the United States, they are still considered off-label. So some kids do really well. I have all three of my kids on this treatment but others may experience side effects like light sensitivity or difficulty reading up close. These are not permanent side effects and they can be reduced if you titrate this concentration down. But again, this is all about to change because there's currently a low-dose atropine drop that's in the FDA review process. So we might have more options for 2026. And then the last is orthokeratology or ortho -K, And that's wearing a rigid contact lens overnight that reshapes the cornea. When the kid wakes up in the morning, they take it out. It works, but it does come with a higher risk of infection and requires a lot of commitment by the parents and the child. And also lifestyle changes. Those are critical. More outdoor time, ideally two hours a day, 
limiting screen time, all of that's been shown to reduce myopia risk. So what Stella offers is something new, earlier starting age, a lower risk profile, and an easier option for children. So who are the Stellis lenses best for? They're approved for kids ages six to 12 who are already nearsighted with or without astigmatism. And they're especially helpful for kids who are too young for contact lenses or for families who just don't wanna deal with nightly eye drops. I can tell you it's hard to remember to put them in or for anyone looking for just a lower risk or an easier to use treatment option. And remember, Stellis can be combined with other strategies like outdoor time or screen breaks or atropine drops, depending on your child's needs. Personally, I like this combination approach. I usually do low-dose atropine and recommend some myopia defocused glasses like the Stellis because the effect is thought to be additive since these treatments are thought to work by different mechanisms. Low-dose atropine works likely on the scleral matrix and the choroid and the contact lenses and the glasses work by the hyperopic defocus combating that. So to recap, Essler Stellis lenses are the very first FDA approved eyeglass lenses that don't only correct vision so your kid can see far away, but slows the progression of nearsightedness in kids. And they've got this really unique lenslet design that has got very good clinical trial result, and they've been used across the world for many years. So this is something I'm very excited about. Just another tool in my toolkit to help American families. So if your child has been diagnosed with nearsightedness, you want to talk with your pediatric ophthalmologist or your optometrist about whether or not Stellis might be a good option for them, about low-dose atropine, about my sight contact lenses, discuss all of it and make that choice. If this video was helpful to you and you found it interesting and want to learn more, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like and comment below. If you are in a country that has already had access to the Stellis lenses, I would love to hear from you. Because like I said, we haven't had them and I love going to these meetings nationally and internationally and hearing from my colleagues from the Middle East, from Europe, from Latin America, who have extensive experience with this lens. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.